three, two, one, and liftoff. Liftoff of the 25th Space Shuttle mission, and it has cleared the tower. Engines at 65%, three engines uh, running normally, three good fuel cells, three good APUs. Engines throttling up, three engines now at 104%. Challenger, go and throttle up. Challenger, go and throttle up. One minute, 15 seconds. Velocity, 2,900 feet per second. Altitude, 9 nautical miles. Downrange distance, 7 nautical miles. We have a report from the flight dynamics officer that the vehicle has exploded. Flight director confirms that. We are looking at uh, checking with the recovery forces to see uh, what can be done at this point. What's going on, everybody? How are you doing today? Here I am in Concord, New Hampshire. Uh, I drove through Concord two or three days ago into Massachusetts and realized I had to be in Concord. And I have a huge list of things I'm doing and sometimes you miss one. I've had to double back and I'm glad I did because this, this is a cemetery, this is a grave. I've been wanting to visit for quite a long time. This is Calvary Cemetery. And it's gorgeous. This is a gorgeous part of the country. And a very, very famous person is from this town. And her grave is just up here to the right of me. Krista McAuliffe, January 28th, 1986. If you were alive that day, I don't, I think whatever age you were, I think you remember where you were when the Space Shuttle Challenger exploded, 73 seconds into its uh, ascent. Now I was in school, I was young, but I remember. I remember the TV, we were outside, because it was around lunchtime, and we were brought in early and this is Toronto and Canada. It was freezing cold outside, I'm sure. But we're all playing outside, kids, little kids, you know. And we came in, we watched it. And, I mean, it is etched in my brain. But also, I remember everybody just going out, going back out afterward. There was no real discussion that I remember. Of. And I've, I've talked about this with other people remember it from watching school and it's the same sort of thing there was really no kind of like explaining or like there was no grief counseling things like that uh, it was just kind of like that happened and then we went back to you know school we didn't get let out early or anything like that and I think today things would be a little different if you witnessed something like that because it was traumatizing and it was scary and it was upsetting but you know then kids come up with theories about why have we didn't know what was going on Oh, there were six astronauts and one teacher. Krista McAuliffe was the teacher. And she was, there was about 11,000 applicants that applied to go on this mission. And Krista McAuliffe won. And she got to go. And the Space Shuttle Challenger disaster, that, the World Trade Center, 9-11, those are two things that certain generation, well, a few generations, different generations, have lived through both and seen this happen in real time or five minutes later on the news uh, I just keep thinking about that how many different things we've witnessed the birth of the internet you know when we were kids there was not we didn't have phones we didn't have the internet things like that and now we do all this technology it's absolutely insane let's go take a look at the grave of Krista McAuliffe she's just up here I passed her grave already and it's Beautiful. Now, of course, when I say beautiful, I mean the grave itself is beautiful. It looks to be black granite underneath some trees on a little hill. Um, graves can be beautiful, but of course they are very sad, too. And you see all around me, American flags. It's a beautiful, beautiful cemetery. One of the, one of the nicer ones I've been to, for sure. She was born in Boston. And she moved to Framington, Massachusetts. She was a high school teacher, like I said. 
She graduated from high school in 1966. Then she went to Framingham State College. She studied American history and education. She received a bachelor's degree. She married a man named Stephen, Stephen McAuliffe. They had met during their high school days. In the early 70s, that's when she began her career as an educator teaching American history and English to junior high school students in Maryland. In 1976, she had a son named Scott. Then she earned a master's degree in education from Bowie State College in 1978. Then her family moved here to New Hampshire. She landed a teaching job here at a high school in Concord and gave birth to a second child named Caroline. Now in 1981, when the first space shuttle circled the Earth, McAuliffe made sure that her students were taking notes and were paying attention to this very, very huge event. And then three years later, then President Ronald Reagan and NASA, they announced a new program called the Teacher in Space Project. This was Krista McAuliffe's dream to go on the space shuttle. Like I said, there's 11,000 applicants. Then Vice President George H.W. Bush, that's George Bush Sr., he delivered the news at a special ceremony at the White House and stated that Krista McAuliffe was going to be the first private citizen passenger in the history of space flight. She became a hero almost instantly here in Concord from what I've read. The whole community rallied behind her. She saw it as the ultimate field trip, going to space. She also believed that by participating in the mission, she could help students better understand space and how NASA works. January 28th, 1986. Her friends and family, including Scott and Caroline, her two kids, watched and waited for the sp uh, Space Shuttle Challenger to take off. It was uh, Cape Canaveral, Florida. Her students here in Concord tuned in with the rest of the country and not just this country, other countries too, Canada, to watch it. And of course, less than two minutes after liftoff, the space shuttle exploded and everyone aboard died. NASA, they spent months analyzing the disaster. Engines throttling up, three engines now at 104%. Challenger, go with throttle up. One minute, 15 seconds, velocity 2,900 feet per second, altitude 9 nautical miles, downrange distance 7 nautical miles. Later determining the problems with the right solid rocket booster had been the primary cause of the disaster. It revealed a gasket had failed in the rocket booster, the cold air had affected the O-rings, and a leak caused fuel to ignite. After her death, Chris McAuliffe received the Congressional Space Medal of Honor. There's a planetarium here in Concord named after her. I believe there's a school, there's scholarship, there's various memorials, funds. There's Chris, uh, Krista McAuliffe Center at Framingham State College was established to carry on her legacy and support the advancement of educational practices throughout the region. Now I'm going to explain to you a little bit about this grave because it is confusing when you read online. See, it took nearly two months to recover the remains from the ocean floor about 18 miles off the shore of Cape Canaveral in Florida. The damage to the crew compartment indicated that it had remained largely intact during the initial explosion, but was extensively damaged when it impacted the ocean. The remains of the crew were badly damaged from impact and submersion and were not fully intact bodies. Now you will read online that on May 20th, 1986, the co-mingled cremated remains of the seven Challenger astronauts were buried at Arlington National Cemetery. Here's a photo of the memorial there. However, I believe at Arlington, unidentified crew remains are buried at the Space Shuttle Challenger Memorial there. Krista McAuliffe was buried at Calvary Cemetery here in Concord, New Hampshire. 
Now, this is a little heavy, but I'm going to say it. The remains that were recovered were not in any condition for an open casket ceremony for any of the crew members. That's obvious. The remains were handled as their and their family's wishes dictated. Some were cremated and some were buried. S. Krista McAuliffe. September 2nd, 1948 to January 28th, 1986. Wife, mother, teacher, pioneer woman. Crew member, space shuttle challenger, America's first ordinary citizen to venture towards space. Below it reads, she helped people, she laughed, she loved and is loved. She appreciated the world's natural beauty. She was curious and sought to learn who we are and what the universe is about. She relied on her own judgment and moral courage to do right. She cared about the suffering of her fellow man. She tried to protect our spaceship, Earth. She taught her children to do the same. and the six other astronauts are heroes and not just American heroes they're heroes and um, people I've had this discussion online before what makes a hero because I've called certain people hero and people have been said why are they a hero Chris McAuliffe and those other astronauts uh, did something that not a lot of us get a chance to do not a lot of us would take the chance to do and it's for the betterment of mankind. And it's to, do, it's to figure out what's out there, how to improve our lives, and they take a huge risk, and that's heroic. And they paid the ultimate price. And Chris McAuliffe was just like you and I. She wasn't an astronaut, she was an ordinary person, as it says, ordinary citizen, but she was extraordinary, if you ask me. That was a terrible, terrible day, I don't think. Um, I don't think it's going to be, I'll ever forget it. I don't think anybody who ever witnessed that will ever forget it. Uh, rest in peace to the seven. And rest in peace, Krista McAuliffe. And I hope your family is thriving. Thanks for watching, everybody. From Concord, New Hampshire. Come on out here sometime. It's beautiful. Peace out.